2020 has been a very interesting year so far for the semiconductor industry. Apple dumped Intel in favor of their in-house ARM processor, Intel is considering outsourcing manufacturing of their processors, TSMC is no longer taking new orders from Huawei. We have videos on each subject that you can watch following the links in the description. Anyways, there is another rumor which suggests that Samsung may also be planning to ditch Snapdragon in favor of their Exynos chipsets. In our today's video, we will talk about why Samsung could be considering such a measure and if Exynos chipset will be enough to compete against Snapdragon's SoCs. Hey everyone, I'm Chaser and welcome to Tech Square. The Reason For several years, Samsung Galaxy S and Note line of phones come with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 series chipset in the North American market while other regions had the Exynos variant. However, recent rumors suggest that Samsung could be gearing up to ditch Qualcomm and rely on their own chipset entirely. This may sound crazy, but there could be some merits to it. Samsung smartphones are getting really, really expensive. The base model Galaxy S20 starts from $999. One of the key reasons for these staggering prices is Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processors. Samsung is paying Qualcomm a relatively high price than Snapdragon 855 which then gets passed on to the consumer. And it's reasonable to assume that Snapdragon 875 SoCs could cost even higher. That next year's S lineup of phones would need to stay above $1,000 mark or higher. Multiple reports also suggest that the Galaxy S20 series phones are not selling well. And the current pandemic is making matters worse as consumers aren't finding enough motivation to drop 100 bucks or more for a smartphone right now. This reluctancy is only going to extend into 2021. Thus, Samsung desperately needs to prevent the prices for Galaxy S21 series phones from skyrocketing while keeping them high-powered premium phones. That's why the idea of using Exynos chipset isn't too far-fetched as ditching Qualcomm could be its best bet out. Since Samsung makes the Exynos chips itself, the company could save a lot of bucks in production cost, allowing them to keep the cost down and increase its profit per device in the process. Exynos vs Snapdragon there are a few commonalities between the Snapdragon and Exynos chipset. The latest chipsets from both companies are built on a 7 nanometer process and follow familiar ARM big little architecture. However, the core layout is drastically different, which makes all the differences between the two chipsets. As a result, the Exynos chipsets are inferior to Qualcomm's Snapdragon chipsets. Samsung uses its fully custom designed Mongoose M5 cores inside Cortex cores from ARM. Meanwhile, Snapdragon uses its own semi-custom cryo cores on their chipsets, which is a leg up over Samsung's Mongoose cores. Qualcomm's Adreno GPU also had a leg up over Mali GPUs used on Exynos chipsets. This results in overall better performance for the Snapdragon chipsets while Exynos are struggling to keep up. Moreover, Samsung recently restructured its use-based R&D teams in Austin and San Jose, which worked on the design and development of the Mongoose chips. With Mongoose core struggling consistently against the Snapdragons, Samsung ditching their custom cores does make sense. But the question remains how Samsung would be able to compete against the Snapdragon chipsets. New ARM cores ARM has taken out a lot of complexities from CPU design in recent years. Qualcomm is producing arguably the best SoCs with semi-custom CPU designs from ARM, while Huawei's high silicon and MediaTek produce competitive products with off-the-shell Cortex A parts. Apple still benefits from a fully custom design given the control it also exports over OS and API libraries, but the same doesn't apply to an Android manufacturer like Samsung. Future Cortex A processors are already targeting efficient laptop class performance, which Samsung has been missing out with its fully custom design. On the other hand, ARM has announced two new high performance cores destined for 2021 mobile SoCs. The new cores are Cortex A78 and Cortex X1, both based on the previous generation Cortex A77. However, Cortex A78 focuses on delivering more performance per watt within a slightly smaller area than before. While the Cortex X1 discards these usual concerns in the pursuit of maximum performance. Samsung has already partnered up with ARM in their CXC program where they will be able to use the Cortex X1 cores in their Exynos processor. This means that, instead of using their own custom Mongoose cores, Samsung will be using a combination of ARM's Cortex A78 and Cortex X1 cores in their upcoming Exynos processor. 
This will allow them to achieve a better edge or at least quite similar performance to their Snapdragon counterparts. Samsung RDNA Samsung and AMD also announced their partnership where AMD will be licensing its graphics technology to Samsung to be used in its future mobile chips. Samsung previously used ARM-designed Mali GPUs in its Exynos chips and the fruit of this partnership would replace the Mali GPU. Although most people think AMD's RDNA graphics architecture is for desktop or laptop, the technology is also used in game consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One. Interestingly, the Snapdragon's Adreno GPU is based on and was owned by AMD before they sold their handset division to Qualcomm. So we got a pretty good idea that Samsung's RDNA-based graphics will be capable of rivaling Qualcomm's Adreno GPU. With the ARM cores alongside AMD's RDNA graphics, architecture could very well bring the performance enhancement Exynos was trying so hard to deliver. This means Exynos could finally be powerful enough to rival Snapdragon. Thus, the rumor of Samsung ditching Snapdragon in favor of their own Exynos chips seems very plausible. And with Samsung producing their own chips will allow the company to save a lot of money in production cost that they will be able to keep the price down for their phones. Even if they don't lower the price, the cost saved from using their own chips will help them to get more profit from selling each unit. So I'm completely in favor of Samsung trying to stand on their own with their own processors. This could even allow them to achieve similar synergy Apple enjoys by designing their own chips using their custom cores. And with that, we are at the end of our today's video. If you like this video, then smash the like button and share it with your friends. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this and hit the bell icon to get notified for our future videos.